A lot of ArtistWorks cello students have asked me what to look for when they're purchasing a new cello. Is there any guidance that I can give in what is like a really stressful time? Because cellos are often expensive, right? Um, so often, you know, one of the, the primary ways for a teacher to help a student pick out a cello is that, you know, if I was in person with you, seeing you week to week, you would like try a cello at a shop and if you liked it, you'd bring it to your lesson. A lot of shops will let you bring home a cello if you're interested in buying it. And so people will bring cellos to a lesson with their teacher to get some direct feedback. Um, so we could simulate that here through some video submissions. Uh, you can submit, like even actually you could just at the shop itself, video yourself playing on a bunch of different instruments and maybe telling me you know, which ones you're leaning towards and I could try and weigh in virtually that way. But I also wanted to just talk about like, you know, when you're at the shop, what should you be looking for? And what's a good method to, to like test a lot of different cellos, right? So for me, um, I just bought new instruments last year after an airline that shall not be named destroyed my working instrument. So uh, all of this is pretty fresh for me. And uh, so when you're looking for a cello, um, obviously you're going to limit your search initially by a price, most likely. You'll probably have a pretty good idea of the most that you want to spend. If I had to like just go out on a limb, I would say that a good, like a really good beginner instrument you could get for like uh, maybe two to five thousand dollars and like a really great intermediate instrument you could get like for like between 10 and 15 maybe twenty thousand dollars and like a professional level classical cello is usually going to be like um well many tens of thousands of dollars maybe like 30 to, to eighty thousand dollars uh for like a professional level cello i myself uh um, like the cello I've been doing all these lessons on and the cello I perform and travel with most of the time is is on the low range of that spectrum is actually a Chinese instrument that I got for about five thousand dollars and it's a common brand of Chinese instrument by the J Haida company H A I D I D E Haida and before this instrument I had another Chinese instrument um, out of the Wayne Burak shop in Dallas, Texas, and Wayne is a great guy, and, uh, and he has some great instruments. He's a cellist himself, and he sets them up. And I guess the reason I'm just instinctively opening with you know talking to you about these affordable Chinese instruments is that um, they're figuring out how to make really high quality cellos at much more affordable prices now. So when I was in high school, I got a really good intermediate level cello for about $15,000. Um, and now I feel like I'm able to get the same quality out of this $5,000 instrument. So um, if you go to a big shop, you could ask them about the J. Haida brand. Or if you live uh, near Dallas, Texas, you could go see Wayne Burak at his shop. And I highly recommend both of those options for an affordable Chinese instrument. But if you're looking to have a more kind of like handmade uh, individual maker for an instrument, which I also have one of those cellos, that I play you know, when I'm uh, in the Silk Road Ensemble or when I'm recording a lot at home. It's a cello that I would use for that. Um, the kinds of things that you would want to look for in any cello, but uh, regardless of price, is, is obviously sound quality. Um, different cellos have different personalities. Um, a lot of like the really million dollar old Italian instruments often just to have like really strong character. Like some of them have this incredible low end that's super dark. And some of them have like a really intensely bright like upper register that's great like if you're playing concertos. And, and so um, having a cello with a strong personality is like a double-edged sword, right? Because if you get a cello that sounds really amazing for like a certain type of music, um, you're, you're going to be in luck if that's the only type of music you play. But uh, if you're like me and you play you know, different kinds of music, 
um, you might actually lean towards you know, what you might call a more neutral instrument, one that has less intrinsic personality, but can kind of respond to your playing more. And so uh, that tends to be a characteristic of newer instruments. Um, the older the instrument, kind of the more set in their, you know, characteristics they tend to be. So if you are able to find a more contemporary instrument, you might find something that feels more malleable and more responsive to your playing in, in different styles of music. Um, but either way, you want to get something, you know, the kind of like the, the home bases that I look for is it's got to have a good bottom end so that you can like support other instruments while at the same time not sacrifice the top end so that you can lead other instruments um, and just kind of finding the right balance between those two. It's kind of like the, the fundamental search for me. Um, often, uh, kind of hand in hand with how a cello sounds is often going to be the playability of a cello. So some cellos just respond really quickly. Um, and some cellos, like, you kind of have to dig in a little more. Often the playability is as much a result of how the cello is set up as much as it is the cello itself. And when I say the setup, I mean what kind of bridge is on the instrument. How high are the strings? And, uh, and, and, you know, actually kind of basically those two main things are going to affect the playability of the instrument. And so um, that's just something to keep in mind. Like if there's a cello that sounds great, but maybe feels difficult to play, like maybe the action of the strings is just a little high, um, that is something that the shop, you know, if they think you're a serious candidate to buy this instrument, they may, they may be willing to adjust the setup of the instrument for you so you can really decide if it's the right one for you. Um, so kind of the quality of the sound and the playability within your price range are pretty much the things to look for. The next, the next kind of like concept I want to talk about is like if you're going to try 10 cellos in a row, how do you really tell them apart? And so what I would say is choose only like three or four things to play on every instrument. Like the worst thing you can do when you're trying cellos is to just play for like 20 minutes on one instrument and then play for 20 minutes on the next instrument. And not only is your ear just gonna get really accustomed to whatever you're playing, and you'll, uh, like if you try and do this for too long, you'll get ear fatigue. You'll like, you'll just lose your attention. But also, uh, you really just wanna do very quick comparisons. So if I had like a line of 10 cellos, I would just take like, three or four things to play on all of them really quickly. And because I am obsessively organized, I would be taking notes on each cello and I would like number them. And this is totally what I did when I bought my cellos last year, is I just took notes because after 10 cellos, you can't remember the difference between two or three. Um, but if you write them down and you keep track out of 10 cellos, if you can choose your three favorite by taking notes as you go and then just looking at your notes and be like, okay, these three seem to be the ones that I like the best. Then you can start to narrow down your search that way. Uh, so taking notes is very helpful because you will forget, um, you know, once you try a lot of instruments, you'll forget how the first one felt. But when you're sitting behind a new cello, what I like to do is take like a couple pieces that I know really well uh, that offer different sound things to play. So I might play, like the swan on all the instruments to kind of see how the melodic uh, aspect of it feels on the upper string. You can learn this piece in the Artist Works Classical Cello Curriculum. Uh, but I would actually only play that much. Don't play the whole swan. Just play that one melody to see how it feels. And then a low melody that I often gravitate towards is the opening towards Brahms E minor sonata. And this helps you explore the C string. Remember, you don't want to get ear fatigue after you try 30 cellos. You just want to get a really quick impression of each instrument. So those are a low and a high melodic range. Um, 
when I was trying cellos last year, I also had a fiddle tune that I would play on each instrument to see how it responded to like fast playing. And uh, I think like you can be any fiddle tune that you're comfortable with. And I was playing like uh, Road to Columbus. <laughs> Basically, just kind of, you know, a cello that responds to really slow melodies like the swan and E minor, Bronson, on a, they may not respond as well to like really fast playing and really activating the strings right away, like in a fiddle tune. Depending on your ability, like one thing I also find myself unsuccessfully playing whenever I'm trying cellos is the second movement to the Elgar Cello Concerto where you got this spiccato stroke. Um, and that's just, again, to see how the cello responds with like a fast playing. And then uh, because of the kind of music that I often play, I always chopped on every cello because I personally am not going to buy a cello that doesn't have a nice chop. So uh, I was actually just trying like a song that I wrote. I would just try this on every cello. But you could play, you know, any chop pattern, you know, if that's something that's important to you, you want to make sure that it, it works on this cello. So that's like a range of things. And then, of course, inevitably, you have to play Bach in order to try out your cello. So, I, you know, just choose one Bach movement and play it on all the instruments. And basically, if you just go through this, like, four or five piece mini set and just play only, like, two minutes, maybe three on each cello, just play through all the things, make a note, like what was good about it, what was not good, and like if it's worth like keeping on your list or worth discarding, just make a note of it, and that way you can get through a lot of instruments um, in kind of an organized way and start to narrow your search down. And then, uh, and then ultimately you may find the cello that's right for you. Um, I would say that, you know, kind of like a car dealership, when you're at a... Uh, a violin shop looking for a new cello, you know, the, the staff is going to try and help you, right? And they're going to try and figure out what you're looking for. And sometimes that's a little overwhelming, and your instinct might be to be like, oh, I'm just browsing, oh, whatever, you know. But I just want to say that the staff truly is going to be your best friend in this search. Uh, if they have a good staff at the shop where you're at, um, like, they, they'll ask you sort of how you feel about the instruments, what you're looking for, obviously what your price range is, and they're going to be a really important partner in figuring out what they have in stock that might match what you're looking for. And so um, I, I have a really good relationship with the staff at Carriage House Violins uh, just outside of Boston, and I love them, and they're affiliated with Johnson Strings, which is like a, a national chain. Of, of, of rental and accessory instruments as well. And so I feel really comfortable with that staff and, and they know the kinds of things that I'm looking for. And so wherever you're living, you know, there'll be a, probably a couple violin shops around and there, you know, you can definitely feel comfortable to go to all the shops and see what they have. But I think there's a lot of value in forming a relationship with a shop because even if you buy one cello from them, um, you know, if you keep going to them for bow repairs, and if you keep going to them when you need to get your cello uh, repaired, then like they'll, you know, when they get another instrument that they think might be a good upgrade for you, or if you decide you're ready for an upgrade, then, then you'll already have a good working relationship with these people. And because buying a cello is such a big investment, uh, I always feel just so much more comfortable feeling like I have kind of like a, like a personal connection with, with the people that are helping me find my cello. So it's not just sort of like a big abstract financial uh, you know, transaction, but that really like the, 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 your local violin shop staff and owners can really be like a long-term you know, colleague for you uh, in your musical activities, whether you're a professional or not. 
um, do take the opportunity to sort of um, open up to the staff and, and, and help, th help them help you because uh, you're going to need to get your cello adjusted, you're going to need to get it fixed, and you want to feel like there's a place you could always go and feel comfortable. Um, and so uh, the place that you end up buying your instrument is most likely going to be that place. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I want to say about buying the cello. Oh, one last little trick. You know, as, you, as you're narrowing down your search, um, one of the things that people talk about with an instrument is whether it's evenly balanced or not. And so like I was kind of saying, you want to test out the range of each instrument. And so sometimes it's good to just play like a one string scale identically up each of the strings just to sort of uh, compare and make sure that the cello sounds even. Sometimes uh, when you do this exercise, one of the strings just won't sound as good as the others. And that's something that this can reveal. So I would just do like a major scale up each screen. That kind of playing, like picking one thing to play identically on all four strings is, is also an important thing just to make sure your cello is evenly balanced. Um, yeah, I think that's the bulk of what I might have to share for purchasing a new cello.